Hi everyone, I'm Christina Savage. And this is Crazy Max Jackson coming at you from absolutely Rose Street. There's a hardware revolution brewing in interactive entertainment systems with lots of new machines in development. Now, some of them will be cool and some of them will suck. And in the middle of all this marketing cha-cha, Sega pops on the scene with a new Genesis 32X. Yeah, and what's the deal with the 32X? Is it going to deliver a whole new level of gaming? Has Sega shot itself in the foot? Boom. We'll see. In 1994, Sega commissioned a 30-minute infomercial with one goal to sell consumers on their newest add-on for the Sega Genesis, the 32X. But unlike the direct sales pitches made by the Atari Jaguar and Philips CDI infomercials, This is the Atari Jaguar, Bob. We're talking the next generation of video games. There's 64 bits of raw gaming power, CD quality stereo sound, and state-of-the-art graphics that blows your old system away! Sega decided to go with a more subtle approach, using what Sega's product manager Peter Loeb described as context advertising. The end result was a 30-minute production designed to look more like a TV show than an infomercial. Absolutely Rose Street aired during Thanksgiving Day weekend of 1994, and despite its questionable quality, Sega purchased airtime for it on networks like E!, MTV!, ESPN2!, Comedy Central!, and more. Sega Visions Magazine had a full-page ad for Absolutely Rose Street in its December issue, and according to Billboard Magazine, who for some reason ran an in-depth article about Absolutely Rose Street in October of 1994, it aired 50 times a week during its late-night infomercial run, and then after December, it was gone. Lost and forgotten about until VideoGameEphemera.com uploaded it to YouTube and published an article about it in 2015. Today we're going to look at one of Sega's, if not gaming's, most unique and obscure advertising experiments. Two fists up. These kids play video games all day long. They're brain dead. Do men with hair plugs have to look like they got doll hair? You were never serious about putting this on the air, were you? Well, I feel the least white hair deserves is a slow, slow, painful death. This is the story of Sega's strange infomercial, Absolutely Rose Street. Absolutely Rose Street draws inspiration from a variety of popular 90s TV shows and movies. Its story is part Wayne's World, the setting is part Beverly Hills 90210, and its characters are part Saved by the Bell. Sega hired LA ad agency Patrico Sinair and Impulse Productions to create the story as well as produce Absolutely Rose Street. In fact, the show's end screen even says that Absolutely Rose Street, as well as Game Beat, the show within the show, are trademarks of Patrico Sinair slash Impulse. I tried to find some more information on Patrico Sinair as well as Impulse Productions, but I really wasn't able to turn up much on them. It's almost like they did something in the 90s that they were so embarrassed about that they disappeared off the face of the earth. And that's not a joke either. Patrico Sinair was founded by Gaspar Patrico after he left the DDB Needham ad agency in December of 1993. There's no mention of his Patrico Sinair ad agency on his LinkedIn profile, yet the next company he co-founded is listed. To be fair, after watching Absolutely Rose Street, it's hard to blame him or anyone else for the omission. The plot of Absolutely Rose Street centers around a group of young 20-somethings who are trying to save Game Beat, a TV show that they produce about video games. Our villain is Joe Whitehead. Your show sucks. An evil TV producer who wants to get Game Beat canceled so that his girlfriend, Stella Lightwood, can have her show take its place. <laughs> Stella is your stereotypical ditzy blonde and is perfectly played by actress Melissa Young, who I immediately recognize from one of my favorite episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Our Man Bashir. Her boyfriend Joe Whitehead is played by Eddie Mega, who is best known from his roles on Laverne and Shirley, Fantasy Island, and The Love Boat. Eddie is still actively working today and has amassed a pretty lengthy resume. The Game Beat Show is hosted by Christina Savage and Max Jackson. Max is presented as a bit of a stereotypical hothead. He overreacts to most situations, makes the group's troubles about him. You're acting like a baby, Max. Yeah, well, maybe I am. And as we'll see later, comes off as a bit of an idiot. He also wears earrings, which in 1994 denotes him as the cool bad boy. <laughs> Christina, on the other hand, is written as a strong character. She's the glue that holds the team together. She's smart resourceful, and the de facto leader of the group. She's way too intelligent to ever date someone like Max, so naturally, Max is her boyfriend. The Game Beat team is rounded out by Jim, the cameraman, and Cody who handles the sound. 
that's really all there is to say about Jim and Cody. They don't get too many lines and aren't really fleshed out as characters. Jim was played by Dex Elliott Sanders, who's gone on to appear in a bunch of stuff, and Cody is played by Archie Keo, who went on to co-star in CSI for 11 years. I wasn't able to find any information on the actors that played Max and Christina or their careers after Absolutely Rose Street. The following is a paid advertisement by Sega of America, but it was supposed to be my show. Styling with Stella. Certain people around here aren't playing fair. Absolutely, Rose Street kicks off with Stella informing us that this infomercial should have been her show and that we're going to get to vote on it her show or theirs by calling an 800 number later on. I found it odd that they would have people call in to vote to see which show should be aired, since we see which show wins the right to air on TV by the end of the infomercial anyway. Even the magazine ad for Absolutely Rose Street tells you that their fates rest on your vote, implying that the show's going to end on a cliffhanger where the audience will choose a winner. It doesn't. In fact, the first thing that the magazine ad says is that it's too late. It's already on the air. Why even bother pretending like the votes are going to matter? Obviously the idea here is to get people to call in to learn about Sega products, but this is a really weird way to go about it. After Stella's monologue, we're treated to Absolutely Rose Street's theme song and intro. The music is pretty generic and the graphics are quintessentially 90s. Following the intro, we get... A commercial. That's right. This infomercial has commercials within it. It's a mix of public service announcements and Sega commercials, all designed to make this feel more like a regular TV show than a 30 minute infomercial. Finally, Absolutely Rose Street really starts. Stay tuned next week when we review Nintendo. You want me to produce that? <laughs> it stinks, it's video crap. After the commercials, we see that the station manager is screening an episode of Game Beat for lover of all things Stella, Joe Whitehead. The episode conveniently cuts off just before Christina finishes saying Nintendo. Joe tries to convince him that it's a waste of time and that they should instead be airing Styling with Stella. Our unnamed station manager tells Joe that Game Beat appeals to the demographics a sponsor is after, and after insulting gamers a few times, Joe begrudgingly agrees to work on the show. Deep down. I got a feeling for these kids. Deep down, it's probably gas. Joe then pays a visit to the Game Beats crew, who appear to both work and live in the biggest apartment you've ever seen. Both sides are pretty aggressive towards each other, with Christina coming off as the sole voice of reason here. Your show sucks. Who asked you? Hey, look, I'm gonna give you punch the bottom line. Either get your show in gear, or we're gonna replace you with more responsible programming. You got that? On uh, the station that brought a senior citizen tag team wrestling. Max. No, you said help. So what'd you have in mind? Yeah, I can use some new cameras. Yeah, and how about some new deals for prototypes and games to review? And travel so we can get out and talk to some people. Despite living in a multi-million dollar building, the Game Beats crew wants a bigger budget. Joe tells them that they need to work with what they have and gives them an ultimatum. Joe's not so dastardly plan appears to be to just let them turn in a show next week, fully expecting it to be so awful that the station manager will have no choice but to cancel them. At least that's the impression we're left with. After a fairly mild tongue lashing from Joe, just about everyone except for Christina is ready to give up on Game Beat and get regular jobs. Max takes the opportunity to one-up everybody by bringing up his daddy issues because Max needs to make this about him. Yeah, I can just hear my father now. I told you so. You should have gone to school. <laughs> Whatever. I guess he was right. But like I said, Christina isn't giving up. So just like that, Max. <sighs> While brainstorming with Max, Christina says that... Doom is coming to video games. No! Really? Doom is coming to video games. Strangely worded phrase that hasn't been uttered before or since. I guess they just didn't want to say that Doom was coming to home console since that might imply that there's going to be a port on the Super Nintendo. Regardless, this is when we get our first mention of Sega products and directly of the 32X, which is ultimately what this infomercial is really about. No. Really? Of course, I've heard. All right, so you know about it. But I've been reading and hearing about it in bits and pieces. The 32X, uh, the thingo adapter for uh, Genesis. Right, it's like a turbocharger. I heard that it makes the Genesis go 40 times faster. Get out of here, that's hype. 
Look, all I know is that it's new and not many people have seen what can do. Including yours, too. Well, I think, Max, that we should find out all we can about this thing. To Max, Cody, and Jim, learning about the 32X apparently means hitting the streets and talking to complete strangers about it. Some of the kids that Max interviews bring up some serious concerns about the 32X and what effect it could have on the Genesis. I'm wondering, will Sega or Genesis die out? Yeah, I'm worried that they might make the Genesis games obsolete. Unable to answer their questions, Max begins hyperventilating. I just wonder if they're gonna carry on the line. <laughs> I don't know why Sega thought that bringing up these concerns and leaving them unanswered this early in the show was a good idea, but we're about 8 minutes in, and so far we've been given more reasons not to buy a 32X than to actually purchase one. Christina is at least doing some research into the 32X. She emails Sega executive Brad Granger about the 32X, and receives a reply via IM. You know, just like real email replies. If you're emailing Sega, your message is being forwarded. I'm being blown up by a computer. Christina decides that the best course of action here is to send another, much creepier email to Brad. I cannot find you. Who are you? Where are you? Wherefore art thou, Romeo, Juliet, Savage, Game Beat? Somehow, an email that would normally result in a restraining order gives Christina access to a bunch of secret Sega information. After a Crash Test Dummies commercial followed up by a Sega Game Gear ad, we see Christina visiting Sega Studios. We're also asked to vote on Stella or Game Beat, but there's no way to actually vote provided. Apparently the 32X does not make your building more secure, because Christina just walks right on in, straight up to Brad Granger and Sam Nicholson. Now, as far as I know, Brad Granger is a fictional character, but Sam Nicholson was the actual producer and director on FMV games Tomcat Alley, Midnight Raiders, and also worked on Surgical Strike. Brad, who's rightfully angry and probably a little confused, tells Christina that he wants nothing to do with her. Look, I don't know how you got in, but you saw some stuff that you weren't supposed to see. Sam, possibly high on the fumes of 90s FMV games, decides to just completely ignore Brad's wishes. So, can you talk about any new games you've got coming up? Well, this is Midnight Raiders, which is a great game. Lots of helicopters and pyro and some really cool That's stuff. That's great. Max will love that. Now, how does the 32X affect live-action CD games? Well, the 32X is great. It makes it more like film. It's got better graphics, better sound. Great. Better graphics it makes it faster, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This somehow leads to Brad and Christina using lines from Shakespeare to argue. What man art thou thus be screened in night so stumblest on my counsel? Well, by a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. So you like Shakespeare, too? Only a literary jerk would use the bard for trigger words. Oh, touche. Mm -hmm. Will the 32X make Genesis and Sega CD systems obsolete? No, quite the contrary. Hey, building up to multiple word answers here. All right, look. Maybe I can show you a couple of things. That'd be great. So Christina convinces Brad to help her out, and I'm left to wonder what exactly is it that Christina sees in Max anyway? <laughs> we then get our second game developer cameo when Doom's American McGee promptly lies to Max about how great Doom is going to be on the 32X. Now American, the first question I'd like to ask you is probably, how well is Doom going to convert from the PC to 32X. Converting Doom from the PC to 32X was a really smooth transition. The game uh, remained pretty much the same. All the key elements are still in there. But the graphics! Are they gonna be there? The graphics are there, the speed's there, everything's there. Back at the Game Beat Mansion, Christina shows up with a 32X and several 32X development cartridges. And here, my brother Game Freaks, I give you the future. After an acting career destroying montage, The gang declares that their show is saved and brings their latest episode to their new producer, Joe Whitehead, who's less than impressed. Is this the best you can do? I gave you kids a shot and you blew it. You were never serious about putting us on the air, were you? 
Hey, look, whether you like it or not, that's the way it is, huh? Welcome to the real world. So even though the station manager only asked Joe to improve the Game Beat show, he takes it upon himself to cancel Game Beat. The Game Beaters are quite upset by the recent turn of events and begin plotting to murder Joe Whitehead. Well, I feel the least Whitehead deserves is a slow, slow, painful death. Okay, maybe they're not really plotting to murder anyone, but they are rather upset. Christina decides that the best course of action is to just shoot the show anyway. Do the show? Yeah, what do we need permission? We're ready to shoot. Everything's in place. Which begs the question, if they haven't shot the show yet, then what exactly did they bring to Joe's office a minute ago? I'm starting to think that Joe's right about Game Beat. Despite having no reason to be, Christina is extremely confident that she can get the show on the air. Then again, she was able to access a bunch of secret Sega information by just replying to an email, and then have 480p videos streamed directly into her computer in 1994. So, Stranger Things have actually literally happened on this show. And at 16 minutes and 47 seconds, we're finally given the 1-800 number to call and vote. And then we get this gem of a scene. We're prepping your show. I killed Game Beat. Oh, Joey! <laughs> I can see it already. Styling with Stella. Huh? Beauty secrets for the sophisticated woman mm. with your host, Stella Lightwood. Yeah, am I good or what, oh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey. I need a job when I grow up. I need a future. I need to laugh. I need to have fun. After a very 90s in-your-face anti-drug PSA, we get a preview for Styling with Stella. And honestly, it looks kind of fun. Do men with hair plugs have to look like they got doll hair? And ladies, tips for power hair in the office. Check it out next on my new show, Stylin' with Stella. Game Beat's big plan to make their show more exciting is to throw a party and rename the Game Beat Mansion Absolutely Rose Street. The show is still called Game Beat, just the place that they live at is called Absolutely Rose Street. The name is never explained and it never comes up again. At this point is where we really get the hard sell for the 32X. See a 32X is no brainer. You just plug into the Genesis, like so, and for 160 bucks, you're onto a whole new level of gaming. Also, Max finally answers the question that caused him to nearly suffocate 15 minutes ago. Now we started the show with a question. Is 16-bit dead? Dum, da dum, dum. Does the 32X kill it? It's alive! You can't kill this thing! Now that's character development I haven't seen since Hulk Hogan's Thunder in Paradise. From here, Max and Christina show us several 32X titles and even compare the 32X to a PC when talking about Doom. And for all you Doomers out there, now you can play Doom on the 32X and hey, it's as fast as a 486. Remember that Sega executive from earlier, Brad Granger? He's here watching from a dark corner for some reason. Game Beat wraps up shooting their show, and Christina convinces Brad, who again, is a Sega executive with a huge salary, to break into the TV station and put the new episode of Game Beat on the station manager's desk. His office is two doors down from the lobby on the left. Just, uh, put it on his desk. Well, just like that? What if somebody stops me? Improvise. As he's leaving, Christina tells Brad, Hey, Rise. you look great in a uniform. Even though he's wearing a business suit, Brad's face here says it all. Brad's new life of crime is off to a superb start. He drops off Game Beat's video in a case labeled Styling with Stella. Somehow the Game Beat crew edited in the first minute or so of Styling with Stella into their own tape. At least that's the only explanation I could come up with, as we see Joe and Stella watching what they think is Styling with Stella's debut from home. <laughs> you look great, sweetheart. You look really good. Joey! What the hell? Is it gonna deliver a whole new level of gaming? Or Wrong show, wrong tape! What the For some reason, Joe thinks that he's going to be in trouble with his boss, even though the new and improved Game Beat is exactly what the station manager wanted him to produce. Look, I can explain everything. Great show, Joe. 
Well, the sponsors loved it, loved it. We've been getting calls all day. I don't know how you do it. You must have a way with kids. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, my God, what a great show. I think we've got a hit on our hands. I want you to produce 26 more. Here, have a cigar. By the way, the sponsors loved the joke about the bimbo. <laughs> what a stroke of genius. <laughs> Leave her in. Would you? So in the end, the station is happy, Game Beat keeps their show, Max and Brad even make up and do this weird thing where they high-five each other's forearms. Unfortunately for Joe, Stella isn't happy with being just a guest star. Look, honey, come on, honey, sweetheart! Joey, you didn't trust me! Stella! And that's absolutely Rose Street. A 30-minute sales pitch with a plot? Sega apparently thought pretty highly of the show, telling Billboard magazine that they would order more episodes if the demand warranted it. Now, I don't know if Absolutely Rose Street convinced anybody to buy a 32X or any of the other Sega products that are mentioned in it, but watching Absolutely Rose Street, even though it's not very good, does make me nostalgic for this Sega. The kind of Sega that was willing to take a risk on something absolutely unexpected. Yes! Yes, I think you did the right thing! Thank you for your vote! Game Beat? Wrong vote, Bub. Thanks for watching. This was obviously a departure from my usual documentary style videos, but don't worry, the next video will be the full fledged X Band documentary. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the full episode of Absolutely Rose Street that's on Video Game of America's YouTube channel, and I'm also going to leave a link to their original 2015 article. If you enjoyed this video and want to help my channel grow, please consider sharing it on Reddit or other social media websites. You can reach out to me directly on Twitter at Russell's Gaming, and if you want to support the show monetarily, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash wrestling with gaming. But most of all, thank you for watching.